Good morning, friends. You already saw um, what I had for breakfast, and I've been kind of busy already this morning. I've uh, got my video uploaded for today and done my outside chores, and I thought I would uh, just chat with you for a little bit while I do my hair. Uh, I don't do my hair every single day, um, but I have naturally wavy hair and it can get quite curly sometimes, which I like and that's how I normally have my hair styled, but I have a problem spot right here in the back and it gets really, really frizzy sometimes. And I was uh, talking with my daughter and she said that maybe if I flat ironed it, it would kind of help control that frizz. So the other night she flat ironed, flat ironed it for me and it really did help. So I think for a while, at least on the days that I have time to mess with it, I am going to flat iron my hair. So that's what I'm going to do today. And she told me I should use this. It's a heat protectant spray. Um, it's actually hers, but I'm going to use it today. And then the next time I go shopping, I will pick some up for myself. But I thought while I was getting ready today, um, <coughs> this stuff makes me joke, um, I'd chat a little bit. Um, today is actually um, October 31st, Halloween. Um, we don't um, celebrate Halloween in our house, but if you do, I hope you have a good and safe day. But I just uploaded my last video for Vlogtober this morning, and it was the book review video. And um, I just wanted to tell you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me for the month of October. Um, I had a really good time doing Vlogtober. And since today is Wednesday, and I always um, upload videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday, and I have a video planned for Friday, I thought, well, I might as well just do a day in the life and upload it on Thursday, and then that way this whole week will be, you know, pretty much finished out. I won't have anything for Saturday, but, um, but that's okay. So, yeah, I wanted to just kind of thank you guys for sticking with me, and I hope you enjoyed Vlogtober. I, I did. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I really was afraid I wouldn't find enough things to talk about or to do or enough videos to make. But uh, you guys gave me some really great suggestions and I had a really great time. I am kicking around the idea of doing Vlogmas and... Um, I will let you know in a future video if I've decided to do it or not. But I am kicking around that idea. Never done Vlogmas before. But I enjoyed Vlogtober, so I'm thinking about it. I'm not very good at this flat ironing stuff, so if you're a pro at it, <laughs> you can give me some tips. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was my one video that is still kind of is kind of not haunting me but I think about it a lot and because it was such a hard video for me to do and that was my um, October outfits video um, I just wanted to thank you guys you guys are so sweet and so kind to me um, for your kind comments and your uh, encouragement um, that video was so challenging for me um, in fact, I never really shared it on any of my other social medias. I didn't share it on Instagram or my blog or <laughs> anything like that because I just, I was too scared to. And you guys have given me a lot of encouragement for that. And I appreciate it so much. And a number of you have said that you'd like me to do more videos like that. So, I'm thinking about maybe doing a winter's outfit video. We'll see. Self-esteem issues have been a problem with me for my whole entire life. 
Um, I've had, had anxiety issues my whole life. And, you know, it seems like right now, everywhere I turn, I hear people talking about anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. Like it's the, um, what can I say, like a fad. Like it's almost a popular thing to say you have anxiety. And, you know, maybe it is in some circles. I don't know. But for me, it's just been something I've struggled with my whole life. I remember like my earliest, earliest memories of when I was really little. I mean, like less than five years old, um, being just fearful and having anxiety about things. And when I was really, really little, I was terribly afraid of germs and I mean, seriously, like shriek. As soon as I found out what germs were, like and understood what germs were and that they could make you sick, I would like freak out when I th of the thought of germs. And my older brother, he tortured me as a kid. He was so mean. And um, he would touch me and say, germ, germ, germs, and get me screaming and crying. And I was like four. And I had all this anxiety and it's just gotten worse as I've gotten older. It's like the more you know about life and what can happen and the bad things that happen. And it's just, it, it go, your mind goes places where you don't really think it should go. In fact, I went, just went to the doctor on Monday to talk to him about my anxiety and because it manifest, manifests itself in physical things. I mean, like heart palpitations and um, shortness of breath and like panic attacks almost. And I've had all kinds of problems with my muscles being constantly like tense and sore and um, it's all due to my anxiety and I've been able to control it with um, natural things and not using medications <clears throat> up till this point and I really I had not gone the pharmaceutical route um, part of being anxious is at least for me is the fear of taking medication and the doctor said that is part of a person who has anxiety. They don't want to take medicine and they don't want to take, specifically don't want to take anxiety medicine. So I really, you know, resisted the thought of taking anxiety medication. But lately my anxiety has been so much worse and I'm not really sure what it, all it is. It could be, well, I know part of it is just, Ever since my mom died, my anxiety has been worse. And even though it's been a couple of years since she passed away, you know, grief doesn't just disappear overnight. And it takes some people longer than others to work through things. And so I know that that is part of my issue. Part of my issue too is, you know, I had so many changes last year. My kids graduated from high school. My career, you might want to say, of homeschooling came to an end. And because I was no longer in the circle of homeschool parents, I lost a lot of friendships. I mean, I haven't say, I can't say that I've lost them. I mean, they're still my friends, but we don't hang out. We don't see each other. So in that sense, I've lost my lost friendships. So there's just been a lot of changes going on in my family and in my life. Um, a lot of financial problems and then my dogs being sick and you know, just all kinds of stuff. So anyway, all of that to say, anxiety is a real issue and it's an issue with me and I'm gonna call my hair good enough because I'm not even going anywhere today. It's not as flat as when my daughter did it for me, but I think I've tamed the frizzies. All right, well, I'll, I'll be back with you when I'm doing my next thing.
So basically what I have on my agenda or on my to-do list today is just some tidying up. My house isn't in any dire straits or anything, but I want to do some tidying up and I need to make some more dog food for Lucy. So I'm going to go ahead and get started tidying up and then I'll show you, I'm not going to do the entire recipe with you for the dog food because it'll take too long and this video will be 40 minutes long if I'm not careful, but um, I will kind of give you the idea, the general idea of how I make her dog food. Does anyone else use the end of their bed as a catch-all for clothes that you've worn but aren't dirty, don't need to go down to the laundry yet? I do that all the time. I'm, and then eventually a pile gets so big that I kick them off when I'm sleeping. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Yeah, I love clothes, but I hate dealing with laundry. I'm crazy that way, I guess. Am I the only one? So this is my family room downstairs in the basement and it's the only room that's really pretty messed up but the reason for that is that I'm in the process of doing a decluttering series for you and it's going to be starting on Monday and it will be every Monday for the next six weeks and so be sure to tune in for that but in the meantime you know I've got to start you know filming those videos to get them ready so I have been decluttering and so I've got all of this this is all boxes of things that needs to go to Goodwill <laughs> um, not these boxes here these are just empty boxes but this big box those two boxes over there this is just some more stuff I need to actually go through I'm probably not going to get rid of any of that stuff I just need to get it put away and then another thing I'm doing is I'm going to be doing a cozy corner challenge for Christmas and they have that video has to be uploaded I think it's the second week of November and so I'm going to be doing it down here on my um, hope chest downstairs because I don't decorate for Christmas until after Thanksgiving but I want to participate in this collaboration so I thought well I'll just do it down here where you know most people won't see it and I'll just get kind of just this one area Christmassy and the rest of my house is going to stay fall until after Thanksgiving but I had to dig through all of my Christmas bins to find the stuff that I want to use for the cozy corner so yeah I've got quite a few projects going down on down here and they're all YouTube related uh, videos <laughs> but I think I'm going to go ahead and try to get as much of this tidied up as I can it's not going to look perfect but it's you know there's things here that I can get put away That is much better. Still have those boxes, but they're going to stay there till the entire decluttering series is done, at least until I'm done filming all of the decluttering series. 
Here are all of the ingredients that I use to make Lucy's dog food. If you're new to my channel, Lucy is my 15 year old, actually her birthday is on November 3rd, so coming up and she'll be 15 on November 3rd, um, has, she has kidney failure. And so in order to keep her healthy and keep her with us for a few more years, she has to be on a very special diet. She hated all of the canned uh, prescription diets, dog foods that um, the vet provided. So I found a recipe online for homemade dog food and I got it approved by the vet and she loves it. And so there's a lot of ingredients that go into it, but I make it in big batches that lasts for about, uh, I think it's 10 days, um, 10 or 12 days at a time. So um, I'm just going to go over really quick what I use. Her diet has to be low protein and low sodium. So for uh, an entire huge batch of the dog food, I only use one pound of ground chuck. And you don't want to use like super lean because she needs the fat and the calories. Um, but I don't get the lowest grade hamburger. I get the ground chuck, which is just a little bit better. But it's not the totally like, oh, I don't know, 90% fat free stuff. So you start off with that and you fry that up. And to that I add spices just to add flavor. Um, I add parsley, crushed rosemary, thyme, and oregano. Now she can have all of these spices, probably more spices too, but I know for sure she cannot have onion or garlic. So I just stick with these spices and she really t seems to like it. So I fry up the meat, I add the spices. Um, the original recipe called for rice, but she hates rice. So I use pasta instead. Normally I use um, whole wheat uh, el elbow macaroni, but I was completely out. And so I got this from Aldi. And I won't use this entire box, I will just use one pound of it. So I'll weigh out a pound of dry um, elbow macaroni and I cook the pasta in either beef broth or chicken broth, either the low sodium or no salt added. Uh, Aldi only has the low sodium. So I will cook the pasta in the broth again to add more flavor. And then I add vegetables. I add a frozen type of vegetable. Um, this time I'm going to be using mixed vegetables. A lot of times I'll use um, chopped up broccoli or peas, but I try to mix it up because she gets bored if it's the exact same recipe every time. So I'm just going to use these mixed vegetables. I'm going to use these green beans. Um, they are no salt added. I'm going to drain them and then kind of chop them up into little smaller pieces. And then I'm going to put these pinto beans in. I'm going to um, rinse them really, really well. There are is salt in these, but if you rinse them really well, it um, makes them low sodium. And this just adds a tiny bit of more protein because the original recipe called for boiled eggs. She doesn't like eggs. So I'm going to put the beans in in place of the eggs. And then she needs calcium because of this lower protein diet she's going to be lacking in some vitamins and minerals and one of those is calcium. So I'm going to crush these calcium tablets up and add to it and then I've got this multivitamin that I got at Walmart and I had this approved by the vet as well and we crush these up and mix it in um, to her food as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get all of this stuff prepped and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all mixed together. And to crush up the calcium, you want it into a fine powder because it, it kind of you want it to just disappear into the food. Um, I've got this coffee grinder and it's only used for crushing her calcium and crushing up her vitamins. Although I think Olivia just crushes these by hand because they're kind of soft. Negative. Negative? Do you use the grinder? Okay. <laughs> Did you hear that, folks? She uses the grinder. So Olivia's going to do this for me. I'm not going to film it because it's really loud. But anyway, yeah. If you ever need to crush up vitamins, use a coffee grinder. And I almost forgot to mention that you 
add uh, diced up white bread. Um, I'm not really sure why unless it's to add bulk to the food and also some vitamins because most um, white bread is enriched. But um, I do follow the recipe as much as I can and as closely as I can and it calls for white bread so that's what we do. So the pasta is done and there's still some liquid left in there which is fine because you kind of need the extra liquid in the food and it's good for her to have extra liquid. And it's very obviously very very hot. And then here's the hamburger and the spices. I just added the spices. I, after the meat was cooked I uh, shut the heat off. And then I just added the spices. And there's a lot of spices in here, but it has to be mixed in to all of this food. And I don't drain the hamburger, because like I said, she needs the uh, fat. Then you just mix it all together really, really well. And I'm going to let it cool down, and then I will bag it up. And I'll show you that process really, you know, when we get to that point. So while I'm waiting for the dog food to cool off so that we can bag it up, I'm going to go ahead and have some lunch. These are just some leftovers from what we had from dinner last night and a bottle of water. The way we um, measure out her food is we use a food scale and we'll have to tear it out so that it comes back to zero. Are you going to come back to zero? There we go. And she gets four ounces per little baggie and she'll get one baggie for breakfast and one baggie for uh, dinner. So she gets um, eight ounces of food per day, which doesn't seem like much, uh, but she's a small dog. So that's all she needs. Here it is all bagged up and we got 12 days worth of food out of that batch and what I'll do is I'll put it in a big like Walmart bag, stick it in the freezer and then I'll pull out like two days worth of food at a time, stick it in the refrigerator to thaw out and then when I go to feed Lucy I uh, just warm it up for about 20 seconds in the microwave just to take the chill off of it and feed it to her and she really really likes it. I wanted to share with you guys a frugal tip that I actually learned from Holly from Frugal Mom Holly. I never realized you could do this until she showed it me in a video, or showed it in a video, not just to me, but to her viewers. You can take this Bath & Body Works foaming soap and you can stretch it. Um, this is my uh, empty bottle from my bathroom my bathroom one is empty and my kitchen one is empty and I only have one of these um, bottles of soap left and what you do is you take it and you pour half of it into another bottle so you're always going to want to have a empty one around to do this and then you just fill it the rest of the way up with water and it works just Fine. It foams up perfectly and works great. And you get two bottles for the price of one. See? It works perfect. Smells just as good. Works just as good. And you get two bottles for the price of one. Um, I wanted to share with you some friend mail that I got. I got last week. Um, I got this from my friend friend Cindy and it's a Thanksgiving card. It's so cute. It says especially for you warm and happy wishes because it's Thanksgiving but more because you're you. Your friend Cindy. Thank you so much Cindy. That was so so sweet and inside the card she sent along this adorable little fox ornament 
and I'll show you where I have it hanging. This is what I call my pilgrim shelf during the fall. It's where I put most of my pilgrims. And since the little fox is dressed up like a pilgrim, I have him hanging off of this little peg that's on this shelf. I think he's adorable. I also wanted to take the opportunity during this video to give you all an update on my dog Pepper. I've mentioned before she was having some problems with some growths on her body. Um, also I wanted to make sure she got in and got her teeth cleaned because I didn't want her to get sick like Lucy did. And so she had a, a mole on her eye that needed to come off. She had a growth on her chest up high like where a person's collarbone would be. Um, and then she also had a, a cyst on her belly. And the vet was not concerned about the mole or the cyst, but this growth up here on her uh, chest was very worrisome to him. So he had it removed. Um, he removed it, I should say. He didn't have it removed. The vet removed it. Here's some pictures of her incisions the day of the surgery. So now we are about a week out from that surgery and she's doing great. Um, she was having a problem with licking that incision up on her chest. And so the next day after we brought her home, I took a trip to Walmart and picked up a t-shirt. This was a recommendation or a um, idea that was given to me by Kim from Schnauzer Mom. If you haven't checked out her channel, you need to check her out. She is great with her dogs. She's got five dogs. I thought three was a lot of dogs, but she has five. Um, but anyway, she suggested I get a t-shirt to put on her to cover her ouchies so that she wouldn't lick them. I didn't want to have to get one of those dumb cones from the vet. That would be such a pain in the butt. So I went to Walmart. Well, all the doggy t-shirts, first of all, they didn't have any in her size. They were all too small and they were expensive for what they were. It's like $8 for a t-shirt. So I went over to the infant department and I found a t-shirt and I got one in the 12 month size and brought it home and it fit her perfectly. Uh, the only problem was at this time of year, the only t-shirts they had were long sleeve t-shirts. So I just cut the, sh the sleeves off and put it on her and it fit her perfectly. It covered up her ouchies and she only had to wear the t-shirt for about a day. And the next day we took it off just to see how she would do because um, the edge of the um, collar on the um, shirt was rubbing just the very tiny tip of her incision and kind of making it sore and red. So we took the t-shirt off and I guess that time, that 24 hours that she had the shirt on, made it so she forgot about it. So she hasn't been licking it since. Um, her incisions look great. They're healing up very nicely. We take her on Monday to have the sutures removed. Um, the only problem, I don't, I don't know if it's even really a problem, it's just that her eye, the mole that they removed, they didn't suture it. They used like a laser, not a laser, a um, cauterizing scalpel so it just cut it off and cauterized it at the same time and so she didn't have to have a stitch there but it's healing and during this healing process it's looking really terrible and it's causing her eye to water a lot so um, to look at her you would think her eye was really painful and really you know bothering her um, but it's not really bothering her it's not infected um, it does itch from time to time I'll find her rubbing her head on the carpet or on the blankets or whatever but that's just a matter of healing we did get the lab results back the vet called yesterday um, on that spot on her chest and it was cancer um, that's not what I wanted to hear but it's not a bleak situation it's not going to end her life or anything like that at this point she's not going to have to have any kind of treatment um, because it was skin cancer and it didn't metastasize, uh, we just have to keep an eye on her. We have to do skin checks on her. We've decided as a family that we're going to skin check her once a month 
on the first of every month just so we get in the habit of doing it and that it's done regularly we know what to look for now we know what these little skin cancers look like so if anything else pops up on her we'll recognize it right away and we can get it in and get it taken off and she won't have to have such a large incision um, I asked the vet what's the chances that it will come back and he said she has a 50 50 chance um, I asked him well how long out like how far like if she doesn't have anything um, reappear within like a few years can we consider it like healed or cured or whatever and he said that's something they just don't know it could be something that she could go years and not have any more problems and then all of a sudden something pop up or she could go the rest of her life and never have another incident like he said it was a 50 50 chance so at this point we're very thankful that we caught it and we got it removed and that all we have to do is watch and keep an eye on her and she's very happy she's very healthy she's very active and so she's not sick she just had a little problem on her skin when we take her back Monday to have her sutures removed we're going to make an appointment for our last dog Sally to get her teeth um, cleaned or at least have her teeth looked at to see if they need to be cleaned because like I said before I'm not gonna let any of my other dogs get as sick as Lucy did so that's an update on pepper thank you guys so much for asking um, you guys have been so great and so you know your outpouring of love to me has been fabulous and I knew you guys would want to know an update on my dogs so friends I am going to end this video here I have been editing as the day has been going on and this video is already past 30 minutes and <laughs> that's the way my day in the lives are maybe if I did day in the lives more often they wouldn't be so long I don't know but anyway thanks so much for joining me today I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up so that I know that you guys like these kind of videos and I will do them more often we'll talk to you later friends bye bye